Good morning. Today is Sunday, November 7th. This is Faith at Home with Pastor, and we're going to celebrate All Saints Sunday today. We had Reformation Sunday last Sunday, so All Saints Sunday today. So I want to begin with prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you. Last Sunday talked about the truths of the Reformation. But as we think, we think about All Saints Sunday, uh, we think about, yes, uh, through the cross we are forgiven of our sins, but through the resurrection we have the promise of life everlasting. That Jesus died, rose again from the dead, ascended into heaven. And uh, in, in his ascension, we know that we too will one day live forever in heaven. And that's the hope that we have, the promise of life everlasting. You know, uh, Psalm 23, uh, you know, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And as we think about All Saints Day, we think about those who have faith in Jesus, who have preceded us in death and are living their eternity with you. And dear Lord, we are living saints here in this world. So we pray that you will help us uh, to always know you as our Lord and Savior and know the hope that we have, that hope of forgiveness and life everlasting. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And when we, we begin All Saints Sunday, we think about uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 7, uh, talks about uh, the throne room of God, uh, standing in white robes uh, and really what God has done for us through Jesus. So, Re Revelation 7, verses 9 through 17. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits in the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come through the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them in his presence. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat on them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. What a beautiful uh, picture that we have of, of heaven. You know, people wearing white robes, holding palm branches, uh, standing before the throne room, uh, the, the throne of God, uh, on which the, the lamb, the shepherd, sits. You know, and first of all, every nation, every tribe, every people, every language, you know, uh, citizens of heaven, you know, people who will have eternal life, comes from the entire world. You know, that's the good news of the gospel, uh, New Testament church. It's preached to all nations, to every tribe, language, people, uh, nation. Uh, they all have access. Uh, and that's, that's our job of the church, is to bring the word of God uh, into, into the entire world. Go and make disciples of all nations. And that's what the church is called upon to do. And so, so, yeah, people who will be in heaven, uh, standing in that throne room, uh, giving praises to God, you know, with the angels, with the elders, uh, the four living creatures. You know, I like the symbolisms that we have with those numbers. You know, the 24 elders you know, standing ar around the throne of God, uh, the, the throne where the lamb is seated. And uh, 24, why 24? It's the 12 tribes of the Old Testament, the 12 disciples of the New Testament, you know, representing the entire church, Old Testament, New Testament combined, the 24, uh, Old Testament, New Testament, uh, all God's people uh, throughout the entire history of, of mankind, all God's people standing around the throne. The four living creatures, that four kind of represents the north, south, east, west. You know, once again, all of creation. You have the heavenly realm, all the angels, you have the entire church, uh, Old Testament, New Testament. You have all people from, from all corners of the earth. Uh, once again, every nation, tribe, people, language around the throne. And what are they doing? They're praising God, uh, 
praise, glory, wisdom, thanks, honor, power, strength be to our God forever and ever. You know, and of course the elders asked that rhetorical question, where did they come from, these people? And of course, John, who wrote Revelation, says, sir, you know. And yeah, he did know. He says, these are those who have come out of the great tribulation. You know, the struggle that we have here in this world, our earthly struggles, they've come out of that tribulation. Uh, whether it's uh, just the history of mankind, uh, Revelation does talk about that tribulation toward the end of time. And some think that seven year of, of, of the tribulation right before the, the, you know, the end of the world. Or some may look at uh, the history of the New Testament church or the history of all mankind. Uh, you know, whatever struggle we come through, uh, persecutions that the church has to endure, uh, that God will bring us through that. You know, we will come out of the great tribulation. Why? Because of the Lamb that is sitting on that throne, that these people have been washed. You know, you think about the waters of baptism. When you think about that washing, their robes, their coverings, you know, uh, when Adam and Eve sinned, God first responded to that sin, promising a Messiah uh, who will crush the head of Satan. But he also uh, took action. He clothed their nakedness. He covered their nakedness. You know, and you think about forgiveness, that we are clothed in Christ's righteousness. We are wearing the robes provided for us by Jesus, uh, his righteousness. Uh, and we get that in our baptism. You know, we die to sin. We rise to newness of life. So washed the robes, made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Blood, how, in, how can blood make something white? White is purity, uh, and the blood shed by Christ on the cross is what purifies us. Uh, we do die to sin, and we rise to newness of life uh, through the waters of baptism. And so as we think about that eternal life that we're going to have, uh, talked about never hungry, not thirsty, uh, scorching heat, wipe away tears from our eyes, you know, that perfect peace that, that awaits us. Uh, what a beautiful picture. Springs of living water. There's that water reference again, you know, tying to, to washing with baptism. The springs of living water. Jesus as the water of life. Uh, and, and we know that, that eternal life awaits us. Uh, physically, being in heaven. But but keep in mind, eternity is a present reality. You know, we right now are living eternity because our spirits, uh, we've had a spiritual resurrection through faith in Jesus, uh, which means that if our spirits were dead to sin, but now they are alive to Christ Jesus, that our spirits have been raised, and so our spirits will now no longer die. Uh, when our bodies die, our spirits will go on. And so, so in a sense, we're already beginning our spiritual life because spiritually we will live forever. Bodily, we still have a death that awaits us. Uh, and so, so when we think about that perfect peace, you know, in a sense, we have that now spiritually. And then uh, it'll have in, in its fulfillment, complete fulfillment uh, through the resurrection uh, at, at the last day, at the end of time. And so, so in Revelation, I kind of want to continue on. Uh, the second reading is John, 1 John 3, 1 through 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope, and him purify themselves just as he is pure. I think that fits very well with what we heard from, from Revelation 7. Uh, robes be made white in the blood of the Lamb. That we have been made pure uh, through Christ Jesus. We are sinners, but we are saints. Saints and sinners at the same time. Sinners in that we still continue to sin while here in this world. Uh, but we are saints clothed in the blood of, 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 of Christ, clothed, clothed in his righteousness. When God sees us, he doesn't see us in our sinfulness. He sees us covered with Christ. And so in a sense, we are saints. And as saints, we are God's children. Twice in, this, in, this, in these verses, uh, verse uh, 1 and verse uh, 2, both mentions children of God. That is exactly what we are. 
uh, we will be like him. You know, from the fall, we fell into sin. Prior to the fall, uh, we were we were perfect. But yet, through the fall of man, we became sinful. But it says, we shall be like him, purified and made holy once again because of Jesus. And so, yeah, let me kind of conclude with Matthew 5, verses 1 through 12, the Beatitudes. Now Jesus saw the crowd. He went up on a mountainside, sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Oh, the Beatitudes, the, the blesseds, you know, called Beatitudes because, you know, all the time it says blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Uh, Jesus, uh, in, in preaching the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Matthew 5 through 7, he begins with the Beatitudes. You know, and when you talk about poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, I think more than anything else, it, it, it shows people who are wanting, realizing that they are needing something. Poor in spirit, you know, you have that attitude that, you know, because the opposite of that is the arrogant and the Pharisees and others who think they can somehow achieve salvation by themselves. Uh, they are not humble. They, don't, they do not have humility, uh, but rather they are arrogant. You know, but when you are poor in spirit, it's not that you have a weak spirit, but you see yourself in need. You see yourself wanting. Uh, you see yourself reaching out your hands uh, to God, asking for help. Uh, and, and in doing so, in faith, uh, that we have the kingdom of God because God reaches out to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. So those who mourn, once again, uh, knowing that, that we, you know, by ourselves are incomplete. Uh, but yet uh, we know that in faith that Christ is there to, to comfort us. Uh, to calm us. I, I remember there's a song uh, years ago that, that talks about sometimes God calms the storm, sometimes he calms the child. And it, re and it mentions how, how there are storms that go on in our lives. There are struggles that we experience in our lives. And, and it, it's tumultuous. And, and yeah, God can, can smooth out the, the road, making it very easy, the path very easy. Uh, he can remove all the barriers that are, in that are in front of us. Or he can let them be and, and be there alongside of us to help us through it. Uh, yes, he sometimes calms the storm. He does that. He can smooth things out in our lives. But sometimes he'll let us go ahead and have struggle because he'd rather calm us, comfort us. You know, and how comforting we think as a child being wrapped with the arms of his parents uh, and held uh, and comforted and, and consoled and, and, and what comfort that, that we have when we know that those arms of, of love are wrapped around us. And so sometimes that's actually better than having everything perfect in our lives uh, to know that we have a God who's walking alongside of us. So best, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God will be there for us. Uh, the meek. You know, meek, sometimes people confuse meekness with timidity. You know, it's not being timid. Um, I think the meek are people who are actually very strong in what they believe, uh, but yet they know how to control that 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 strength. Uh, I've heard someone explain it once, where it's like the person's a monster. You know, very determined and and can handle things uh, quite well, but yet knows how to restrain oneself. And, uh, and I think uh, the fruit of the Spirit connected to that is self-control. You, know, you know how to control yourself. You know, be assertive when you need to, uh, but also to be, to be meek. 
knowing when to act and when not to act. Uh, I think, yeah, it's not timidity. I, you know, I think it's very different than that. Those who hunger, thirst for righteousness, uh, the poor, those who mourn, uh, same thing. They see their fulfillment in Christ. Hunger and thirst. We know that Christ is who's going to satisfy us. Blessed are the merciful. When we show mercy, we will be shown mercy. Uh, our cup will overflow. We can never outgive God. Whenever we we let stuff out of our, pour stuff out of our cup, God continues to fill our cup. You know, when we are merciful, God will show us mercy. We will, ne we will never run out of mercy. Uh, God will continue to give that to us. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. You know, uh, purity is found in Christ. And when we are pure through Christ, we see then Christ. And in seeing Christ, uh, we see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And so when we are peaceful as well, we are conveying Christ, uh, who is the Prince of Peace. And, and we are then God's children, because we are acting like, like Christ. Blessed are those who are persecuted uh, because of righteousness, people who are known to be Christian, because the reality of it is, is if we share our faith, we will be persecuted. It's, 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 kind of a uh, par for the course. You know, it's exactly what's going to happen to us. Uh, it's the reality. We carry our crosses and follow Jesus. You know, we're going to have suffering. We're going to have persecutions. If we are known to be Christian, we can hide our faith uh, to try to avoid those persecutions, but that's not how a Christian is to act. We are to, to let it be known who, whose we are, that we belong to Christ. And, but along with that will come persecutions. But blessed are, are those who are persecuted for, for uh, ours, once again, is the kingdom of heaven. God is going to be with us. Blessed are those who are people insult, persecute you, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. He says rejoice and be glad. You know, we are in good company. You know, they perse persecuted the prophets who were before us. You know, and, and look, look where they are. They are living their eternity with Jesus. Uh, so do not fear. One, God will help us. Uh, when he says in the Great Commission, go and make disciples of all nations, you know, the words, you know, the gospel ends with those words, lo, I am with you always. Don't, do not worry. I will go with you. I will be with you. You will not be alone. And so whatever struggles we may have here in this world, uh, know that we are not alone. And, and how beautiful it is to, to, to think about that on All Saints Sunday. That while here in this world, God is with us. And when we leave this world, God will always be with us. We will be his. I will, I will be your God and you will be my people. That's a promise given to Abraham. And that's a promise that we hold dear today. So let's close with, close with prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much once again for all that you have done for us. The truths of the Reformation as well as, well as the promise of life everlasting on All Saints Sunday. So, dear Lord, bless us as children of God that we truly can live as your children and people can see Christ in the things that we say and do. Use us as your servants, Lord. We pray everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us and look forward to seeing you next week.